Go ahead and get started here. So today we have Tomas Foldy talking about the Tableau Extensions API. And then today uh, I am Patrick Byrne. I am on the community team here at Tableau. <clears throat> and with me today is also Patrick Vanderheide, who's also on our uh, Tableau community team. And today we have Tomas Foldy uh, presenting a webinar about the Extensions API. Uh, just a little bit quick history about Tomas. Uh, he has a long history of processing and working with data. Tomas truly enjoys data like nuclear bomb fallout simulations to ethical hacking. Skilled in a multitude from ASM, <coughs> multitude of languages from ASM, Fortran, C to C Sharp and C++ to Python or just Ruby to just name a few. Uh, Tomas has, has been um, Tomas has had, <coughs> excuse me, uh, reverse engineering is another habit that Tomas has had since a young lad, and his passion for reverse engineering has not wavered with age. His skills around a computer allow him to develop some highly creative views, Tableau leveraging his little known areas and tools of Tableau, such as the Tableau Extensions API. Then from his own LinkedIn profile, decades of experience with data processing and state-of-the-art programming from nuclear bomb explosion simulation to distributed file systems, ethical hacking, and real-time processing. Practically, I always had a great fun with those geeky ones and zeros. And it's my pleasure to now uh, pass over the presentation to Tomas. Thank you. So let me share my screen, if I can. Uh, OK. So welcome, everyone. This is Tom Ash Foley. And today, I'd just like to show you a uh, Couple of examples how you can leverage uh, some of the Tableau extensibility APIs like the external service connection and the extension API, which is pretty brand new. So, first of all, what can you expect? Uh, I'm not really the guy who is uh, really good at uh, uh, Tableau desktop. I'm not really making useful charts. And I'm definitely not interested in norm core stuff. What I usually do is working with extension, using developer APIs, hacking some new features into Tableau. So uh, doing the fun stuff, fun stuff, or at least what I think it's fun. So today I'd like to start with, uh, with the Tableau external services connection API, which is one of the most underused Tableau feature, to be honest. And uh, the thing what this external service connection can do is uh, you can extend the Tableau functions with codes from R or Python packages or from Python code. So as uh, external service defined in the Tableau knowledge base, it's, uh, it's just a set of functions where you can pass expressions from additional programming languages like R, MATLAB, or Python. Tableau will evaluate these in an external service, like a Python service or an R server, and pass back the results to your Tableau. So basically, these are Tableau table calculations written on R or Python. So this is uh, how you should you know, imagine a, a calculation. So if you'd like to do some clustering on your Tableau data, you just uh, write the Python code directly into the Tableau calculation field. So in this example, you have x, y coordinates. You just pass these x, y coordinates uh, to your Python code, and your Python code will input, uh, include or import a couple of uh, packages like NumPy, uh, Skikit-Learn, do a, a clustering algorithm, and return with the labels what you can use to color uh, the the values in your dashboard. So this is pretty basic. Let me let me show an example. So let me just you know start my double desktop and show a dashboard which is using this uh, external service in a in a very basic way. So first of all, when you 
just uh, uh, open a dashboard which uses uh, external service connections, you will have a very similar pop-up window as you have custom SQLs. It's simply because it could have security impact on your workbook. Simply, whatever code you write in your uh, workbooks, it will be executed, and obviously, uh, this code can change the operating system and stuff. So you should really understand what you are uh, executing in your examples. So let's uh, open the workbook. And the first thing what I need to do is to tell uh, Tableau where is my external service. So I have my Python the top by server on the port 9004. I will explain what is uh, this top by service, but let's just configure it right now and uh, see what we have here. As you see in my dashboard, I have the collision data, uh, the traffic collisions from, uh, for New York City, and I can do some analysis directly in the dashboard. Let's say uh, I'd like to see uh, every hotspot in New York where we have at least two collisions in a 100 uh, feet radius. And, and the fun thing that I can change like the number of collisions to four, I can also increase the distance in radius, and all these informations, all these calculations are uh, calculated immediately. So we have we can do this kind of, it's, it's also like a clustering. We can do it directly in the, in the, uh, in the table server. Let me show it uh, how. Uh, yeah. So this is where we have the, uh, the dashboard sheet and I have one nice calculation here, pretty similar what Bora Bean did uh, in his example dashboard, we just take the latitude, the longitude coordinate, uh, coordinates, uh, also take the, the distance between the collisions, the number of collisions, and uh, based on this information, we can say that if this maps to our conditions or not. So we, could, we just tell, yes, uh, these are, uh, 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 we have uh, neighbors, neighbor collisions which met the criteria, and we can use this yes, no as a filter. So as you can see, uh, with these Python calculations, we can add uh, complex calculations with uh, very easily to our dashboards. Now, uh, this was the original intent of this external service, but fortunately, you can use uh, the external service for even more uh, even more fun. So let's see how can we add live data to our dashboards? How can we add uh, more interactivity? How can we add live data source connections to our dashboard? So let me close this guy and open another one, which will also execute some Python code in it. I also have to tell where is my external service. It's the same guy, it's the same port. And now what you can see is that I have my pretty boring sales table, but the, the interesting fact that I can change the table contents to other currencies. And the currency conversion happens actually live. So I have a web service which asks a web service about the currency conversion rates. So my data set. Tomas, Tomas just yeah. a second. We're not seeing your screen for some reason. We're just seeing uh, the opening piece of uh, Tableau desktop. Ah. Uh, oh. Hey. Let me share it again. Just tell me that. Uh, did you see the New York collision, or just you, uh, just or just you lost this one? Uh, we see a screen with um, furniture, office supplies, technology. Okay, uh, so it's fine. So let me show that you can change the currencies to euro or 
British pounds and all these numbers hopefully on your screen too are calculated based on live web service data coming from the internet. And here the only difference is that if we check the converted value calculation then uh, yeah, it's the converted value which is here. So here we practically call one function hosted on our top by server and ask to convert uh, our number from USD uh, to this, uh, so the uh, convert the sales to our target currency, which allows us to add new currencies pretty easily. So I hope that's the Indian rupee. And we see the data in Indian rupee. And uh, again, these currencies are not part of our data set in any way. So the way how it works is you have your Tableau desktop or Tableau server, which has an external services API connector, uh, which connects to a standalone process called TabPy. And this TabPy is an open source project by Tableau. You can download it and it's uh, obviously free and not just open source. And uh, based, you can just write your Python, uh, Python scripts deployed to this uh, TabPy server, which is a Python server. And from that uh, moment, you can call all of your complex codes. So it allows you to simplify the, uh, the code, the Python code, what you put into your Tableau workbooks and you can reuse the code across multiple workbooks. So it's, it's pretty fun. Going back to the previous example, uh, again, so how we were able to add this live connection functionality to Tableau, we just simply use this much of a code. We tell that we are going to be a TabPy client. I took something from the internet called Forex Python package, which has our currency rates uh, functionality. We tell there is our TabPy server. And here we just say, whenever or whoever call a convert to function from Tableau desktop, uh, we should call the convert to function. It takes a target uh, and a value and we just call the get rate function of this currency rate package. So basically we were able to add web service functionality using some external uh, currency converter tool. And uh, with like five or six lines of code, we added live connector functionality to our, to our dashboard. Let's see a more complex example. So I hope it will work. Let me just close this one and see how can we add even more live data. So, let me set also the external server server. And here, if everything works correctly, I'd like to see everything between these start dates uh, from Twitter, where anyone mentions Tableau as a, as a search. Uh, I mean, uh, when Tableau as a term just mentioned. I'd like to also calculate the sentiment to see who is saying good or bad about Tableau. And uh, everything is live, so I can change the Tableau, uh, search them to, Anything else, I can also change the, the dates here. So as you can see, people are saying good things about Tableau, I like the My, My Tableau voice, it's a high visibility. Uh, and we see bad things like why machine learning meaningless without human context. Uh, it's also like a bad sentiment. However, we know that, uh, you know, it's, it's from Tableau, so it's actually, it's not that bad. And as you see, all the things are here. It's live data. And if I change Tableau to something else, you know, maybe Bitcoin, which is uh, you know pretty discussed on Twitter these days. Uh, I hope you bought some Bitcoin 
uh, during the dip, as I did. So I'm also interested how, what will be the future of, of Bitcoin, so I can see the number of tweets, uh, how many people retweeted, what's the sentiment, uh, and, and, you know, all the data is here are live data. And I never did any web data connectors, I didn't try database drivers, the only thing which is used here is simply external services, and that's how I get my data uh, into my dashboard. And again, Tomas, I, Tomas yeah. there was a there's a question from one of the one of the people attending asking about the impact of uh, like a large scale deployment on the Tab Pi server. So you know, if you had a lot of people hitting that server, what would be the the impacts on the dashboards, and and how would that uh, how would that relate here? Well, the thing is that uh, it it's like your Python code. So you know how you did your, uh, how much resources uh, required to run your Python code, and you just need to multiply it with a, with a number of concurrent requests from your dashboard. So if you have heavyweight calculations on your TabPy server, then uh, yes, you need to scale up your, your TabPy server. Uh, but it's just uh, if your server is not available or slow, then your response time will be slow. It's it's very similar, like the database uh, load or the database utilizations. Okay. And, and then there was one other question. I'm sorry. Just, yes. There's one other question is is whether or not this works on Tableau Online. Of course, it's not. I mean, I think it's not at least. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe that's the. Uh, I don't think so. 95% sure that it's not. I'm not really a huge Tableau Online user, but uh, well, uh, due to the security uh, concerns, I think it's, uh, it's not really working on online. And also, uh, just to summarize, so let's start with the cons, because you just ask online. So first of all, for this Python service, at the moment, you don't have any security. So when you start your Pi, uh, uh, top Pi service, anyone on the internet can access it if you don't use firewalls. But still, there is no user authentication. So it's, uh, it's pretty immature at the moment. But I'm sure that Tableau will put a lot of uh, effort in it because, as you see, it has a very uh, large power. I mean, you can do many things, but you cannot do with anything else in the, in the Tableau world. And right now, again, as you see, I also had to type every time where is my TabPy server. So for some reasons, this doesn't really uh, save my uh, settings. On the other hand, you can do advanced analytics. You can use the power of thousands of R, Python, or MATLAB packages. And finally, you can create live connections to custom data sets pretty easily, including web services or uh, unsupported databases without you know, really uh, doing a lot of development efforts. All right, uh, if there will be any questions regarding the external services, I'm also happy to answer uh, at, the, at the end. So, Let's move forward to the, to the Tableau extension part, which was the former project Sprillard. If you were at TC, that, uh, then you know that uh, this was uh, presented by Ben Lauer, and uh, this will open up possibilities to extend your Tableau dashboards with additional visualizations or functionalities. So it will be uh, an additional step to do whatever you want inside Tableau using standard APIs. So what exactly it's, uh, it is? So basically, the extension API uh, are, is an API where you can access inside from a Tableau dashboard uh, uh, the data set, the visualization. You can change the filters, the parameters. So it's like having the Tableau JavaScript API inside of a dashboard component. Let me show a very quick example how you should imagine that. Let me just quickly start the, let's start with the refresh guy. So let's close this. 
and open a nice superstore sales dashboard. This is one of my favorite. I can understand what's going on. So I, I do love this. So if you check the new Tableau or the forthcoming Tableau, this is in a beta at the moment. So the, by the Tableau extension, uh, uh, external services are already in Tableau since, uh, I don't know, maybe Tableau 9 point, whatever. So it's uh, um, available in every 10th version. This new extensions is something which will be released probably this year, probably uh, the first half of this year, but I'm not a Tableau employee, so I have honestly no idea when it will be released, but it's uh, in beta phase right now, so probably pretty soon. So in this dashboard field, you will have access to extensions, what you can drag and drop into your dashboard canvas, just like any other ordinary sheets. For instance, let me just take this auto refresh example at here, and uh, it will refresh my dashboards after a certain uh, amount of time. So after 10 seconds, it will refresh. Obviously, it's an extract, so you don't see anything. Uh, let me quickly fix it. So if I go here to the sheet, why? Thanks. So let's just multiply this sales with a random number. Mm. It's multiply random. Cool. So if I go here, then after uh, this time, uh, after this uh, time period, when uh, 10 seconds, you know, are done on the bottom, the chart should be refreshed and it's refreshed. And when or after you uh, publish this dashboard to Tableau server, the same functionality will be available. So it works not just in desktop, it works in server, it works everywhere. And uh, you can add quite, uh, practically anything which can be visualized uh, as a uh, as a container on the, on your dashboard. And in this example, we were not just able to put things here, but also interact with the dashboard and refresh the data or recalculate all the calculations from our uh, nice uh, extension. So let's see what else we have here. Let's see this uh, nice uh, brush filter to show like another use case. And this brush filter was uh, uh, basically built by uh, Chris Demartini, who is uh, one of the best Zen master uh, from the Zen master branch. And uh, he, he just wanted to ex fix the, or extend the, uh, the usability of the date filters. So let me just quickly show what he did. It was like TTT. Uh, so I have to found this a pagination external, obviously, the brush. This is it. So still, let's open with the, uh, this superstore guy. Let's pick uh, the same dashboard. It should work everywhere. I hope it will work here too. Put this. Uh, nice dashboard component here. We can check uh, the uh, X field. We can also show that, change the, or set the other. And now if I change here the date filter, obviously the other part of the dashboard will be refreshed too. Let me just, uh -huh. if I can just, show it this stuff on the bottom as well. That would be awesome, yes. So let's change the filters here. And as you see, it's pretty smooth and the user experience is much more tailored. Uh, I mean, if you compare this uh, time interval selector and this time interval selector, this is more intuitive. And uh, as you see, it's also configurable. I was able to select when I just dragged my extension 
what needs to be shown here. So the extension, uh, using this extension API, we can add configurations and all these configuration values can be written back to the dashboard definition. So next time if I open this dashboard, it will remember that my selection was order date and, and sales for the brush filter. So I think it's, it's pretty nice. Same for Sankey, I mean, a lot of uh, how-tos are on the internet out there, how you can make nice Sankey charts uh, for, uh, in Tableau, but all of these require some kind of calculations hack, so it's not that, not that straightforward, not that easy for the end users to build charts which are not built into Tableau directly. So let me show how the future uh, experience uh, will be for the end users after they download an extension and uh, how can how can they just easily add this uh, new types of chart so this is it uh, let me start this one and yeah here I have some arm sales data, drag and drop this D3, uh, no, the same key diagram extension to the right, resize it, and now I have some key charts directly in my dashboard, with just, you know, one single drag and drop. It's a D3 visualization, so it's not, probably it's not the best, but it was able to read out the dimension information, uh, the, the connection information from the data set, and it's uh, absolutely uh, interactive. So what I imagine and what I expect for the future is that the community will build hundreds of uh, custom visualizations, and you can use the same things for um, you know, write back data, calculate some things, and add uh, custom, not just custom visualizations, but also custom functionality directly to the dashboard, which can interact with the data located in the, in the dashboard. So I, I really love this feature. I think this is one of the last example, like uh, associative filtering, just to show that uh, you can also combine the extensions with uh, the external services. You can also take data from the internet uh, in live uh, during the dashboard consumption time to enrich the user experience. So let me just start from scratch and start my Tableau association extension. So let's start with a very basic Excel file, which has a couple of words in it. And what I'd like to do is to add my, my so-called associative filtering extension. And I think it's this one. I hope it is. So there is a service on the internet which can, uh, uh, like a web service, if I add a word, it will check what are the associations or the synonyms for that word. So I'd like to uh, query for uh, chairs, but maybe in my, uh, let's imagine that I have way more uh, words here. I want to query for uh, chairs, but what is in my mind is, is seat. So if I query seat, it will return like what are the associations for this word seat, and based on the association, it will filter my words on the left side, which allows me to filter on large data sets more precisely. I don't have to remember the word. It can give me like fuzzy matches back, but, uh, the way how it works, I'm using text mining, machine learning, external services for one single reason is to increase the user experience when I'm browsing my uh, dashboard. So let's clear everything and 
bad or I, mean, uh, I forget to clear the things. Yeah, so bad, evil, wicked, weakness. Uh, it's uh, just, you know, works pretty well. And I also made uh, another example, maybe the, I can also show that one. Uh, yeah. So with the same uh, association service, I was able to search uh, the Twitter tweets of Trump and uh, Clinton and search for college for the word and everything which is related to that, like uh, college, tuition, uh, or university, uh, I was able to, to filter that down. And also I had a slider to, uh, to define how tied the association should be. So this also helps the analyst to find uh, uh, the data, the relevant data. So I think it's just another use case for, for extensions. And I think I have maybe one more extension less left the pagination. And the only reason uh, I'd like to show this is because uh, traditionally the pagination functions are not working on Tableau Server. So uh, some of the people are, um, some of our clients require to have pagination on the server side. And in the past, we used some uh, nasty hacks to have this uh, uh, feature uh, on their systems. But right now, there is a solution for that. So let me check if I can show this as well. It's the pagination and let's close this and start with a superstore one still my favorite and uh, let's move the pagination here so I can configure the pagination uh, module here due to some extension API bug it's, uh, it's not that easy at the moment but I hope Ben will fix it for me. So I can select what is the field where I'd like to do the, the pagination. And in my pagination example, I can do it for the order date. I can say that this is a date column. I can say that take 16th uh, slide from the order date. So as you see, it's already calculated what is the, uh, the, the best uh, uh, division for the 16th date. And if I scroll down, uh, why can I scroll down? Yes, I can say, should it be animated? And if I just, you know, change the pages, it will move that part. And I can also do this uh, playing feature. And since it's an, ex it's an extension, actually it works also on the on the server as well let me check if i have have it here so this is like the same guy with the same extension i can also check this add as a date and do the pagination on my nice double server so as you see, it works pretty much in the same way as in, uh, in my Tableau desktop. So adding features which were missing from Tableau Server are also pretty easy. So it's really about your creativity, your user's requirement. Practically, you can do everything. So this was fun. But uh, there is always one question which, you know, for us at least, uh, came to down to one question. So can we create Excels with, uh, with the extension API? And unfortunately, you cannot. Because even if the extension API is developing, at the moment, it's still missing the crosstab export functionality. So as you see, someone just 
you know, open this already. We have a nice GitHub issue for this feature request, but it's not implemented yet, even if we need this badly. So there is always solutions for the meanwhile. So let me show with my other so-called web data connector hack, how can you add Excel export functionality with a very similar way how extensions work. So let me just open this nice Excel worksheet. This is the same Superstore guy, but here I added like another extension, which is not a tablet extension. This is our, our extension format. And if I just press the button here, it generates a nice Excel sheet. And if I open it, I have all the worksheets inside the dashboard in my Excel in the same cross the format. So this is, I think, one of our best-selling consultancy stuff. Everyone likes Excel, everyone needs Excel, but at the moment you cannot really do it with the extension, but uh, I will share the link, ask for the functionality, and you will have it. So actually that was all. So if you have any questions, uh, maybe you have, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer uh, anything. So, do we can send email from TapPi when some dynamic conditions match? Hey, hey, Tomas? Yes. Yes, we have a couple of questions in the Q&A that uh, mm -hmm. we should address here. Uh, one is, um, <clears throat> about uh, using the TabPy API to do some uh, sending out like emails uh, when a dynamic condition is met? Yeah, you can. Uh, so, tap, yes. So you can pass the values to TabPy. It can understand uh, the data, check for the changes and send the alerts or emails if necessary. So definitely it's something what you can do. Okay, and then we have another question uh, asking about actually starting the extensions uh, or enabling them. Uh, they said you're running a start.sh each time. Yes, uh, so these uh, extensions usually are static HTML and JavaScript files. So in most of the times, the start age as, uh, sh just uh, really starts uh, a static server. So here, if I go here and check my nice start sh, it calls a very simple HTTP server on port 8080. So it's just uh, like a, a static web page. Usually you should have one single repository where you, show, uh, where you publish all of your uh, static like HTML files. However, some uh, extensions can also have some server backend like uh, the extension will take data, uh, read it from the Tableau dashboard, pass it to the backend. Uh, so one of my example, which was the association example, I had a backend which checked these uh, associations. So uh, most of the time, static web hosting is enough. If you have something complex, you need to have um, an application server. And I'm just lazy to type this, you know, during a, a screencast. Can, can we use Python 3 with Tableau Desktop? I don't think so. Actually, no, you cannot. Uh, as far as I know, it's uh, strictly uh, 2.7. The tab pi uh, is, is only running on uh, 2.7 version. Hopefully you do not need an external server for this. Yes, it can be done in pure JavaScript and you don't need an external server. It's, uh, uh, the way how it works, uh, not this one, but the EXA. So this, uh, Good things start when you start on inspect in your browser. Now, this guy here is an iframe. 
and uh, hopefully I can, you can see it here. So an iframe and this iframe here, uh, you can host it as a web data connector. And if this HTML iframe, which is a web frame, uh, let me start from the beginning. So let's imagine that you have an HTML file, which is published as a web data connector. When you publish or uh, import a web data connector in Tableau Word, it will be uh, imported to your gateway server. So your web data connector will have the same host name as the as your tableau server as long as it has the same host name and you import it to your dashboard when tableau renders it your nice html frame can go to your parent frame its parent frame and use the tableau javascript api to get all this information so the way how it, this excel works is that it's published as a web data connector and uh, uh, the way which is uh, documented on my blog, uh, it accesses the data, the cross tab data for the dashboard and generates the Excel using a client side library, which creates the Excel in your browser. So that's how it works. It's in pure JavaScript. Any other question? Yeah, we have one more question from chat earlier. Uh, they're asking about the difference between uh, like the Tableau R integration and using the TabPy. So uh, the R, these are very similar. The, the, v, the, the reason why we have this uh, TabPy server is uh, because Python doesn't have a, a server like R server. So Tableau first added the R integration using the R server protocol. And then just to reuse the same functionality and the R integration, they, build, uh, they uh, built uh, a wrapper between the Python code and the R protocol. So Tableau using the R server protocol or something similar to access uh, uh, this uh, TabPy server and, and TabPy just executes your code. So that's the, that's the history, uh, but the simple answer is that there is no such thing as our server in the Python world. Any chance you can get access to some of these extensions, I always uh, promise that I will share the links. Actually, all of these are open source. I just always forget to do that, uh, but this time I will not forget. So we have all, all of these stuff here. And if Brian will be pushy enough, I will send him the link so we can put it into the Tableau community. Oh, we got one more question it looks like. Do you know if the extension API will work on Tableau? Actually, uh, it's built by Tableau. So the Tableau extension API, uh, maybe I don't get the, uh, the question, but you can actually join to this developer preview. So you can right now uh, download or at least request a download for a special Tableau build where this functionality is enabled. And also there are some uh, samples on Tableau's GitHub you can try. And in London, there will be a, a, an event in March when Tableau developers can help you also to build your first extensions. So it's already documented, it's supported by Tableau, it's just not released, it's in a beta phase, but anyone can just go here, tableau.com developer extensions, and join the developer preview, which means that you can just download the same Tableau desktop that I used for my presentation and start trying out the extensions built by the, uh, the Tableau team. 
this is the GitHub link, so it has samples, tutorials, anything you need to start for uh, building your own extensions. I think we had one more question here about the <clears throat> of actually using one of these vizs in a mobile app and whether or not that was going to execute the code. So uh, the mobile app will, oh, as far as I think, and I never tried. Uh, so the mobile application uses the server, and the server will connect to the TapPy service and the R server. So your mobile device does not execute any code. Every uh, all the code are just dispatched dispatched to your uh, TapPy server and mobile using the server. And for Rodi, uh, are you hitting VSQL to get the actual cross tab? Uh, well, yes. So uh, yes. So we are using VSQL commands directly, not the JavaScript API, but the VSQL API. But that's cooler. So that's what we are doing. Okay, uh, any other question? No, it looks like that is it. Well, thank you so much, Thomas. That was very, very uh, interesting and uh, very informative. It was a pleasure to be with you. So thank you, thank you for joining. It was, again. Just, I can just repeat myself. It was a pleasure. So have a nice day, evening or morning, and uh, see you at the next TDT.